Alrighty, so I'm Mrs. Bridges. I'm your college and career counselor. And today we're gonna do just an overview of um, the junior college planning. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna ask you guys, just make sure you're on mute. And feel free to have your camera on. Um, you can also feel free to um, put questions in the chat as we go along. And if I don't get to your question, I'll go through the questions at the end. All righty. So, and I'm gonna be admitting people in as we, as we get started. So this is mainly, this is all gonna focus on college planning. So of course I wanna recognize there are so many different pathways after high school and there's a combination of many that you can do. So there's no right or wrong way to, um, or right or wrong path after college or after high school. Um, but today we're gonna to focus on that college planning because I can feel very overwhelming. So what I'm gonna do, we have some more people joining us. Um, I wanna remind you all that everybody has two counselors. So you have a college and career counselor and you have your caseload counselor. You are meeting with your caseload counselor for academic advising um, now. They have started, okay? And so that's gonna be through your English classes. And we'll go over a little bit of um, information, but I will show you some resources to help you plan, like do I wanna do AP or dual enrollment or how do I balance my, my course load? So let's get started. I'm gonna share my screen. Alrighty, so I wonder what will happen if I could do this. Can you see the screen still? Yep. Mm -hmm. Is it a full screen? It is. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so you see junior college planning. Yep. All right, thank you. Okay, so big thing today, everybody get your phones out, go to your Instagram, make sure that you are following Battlefield Counseling. The reason why I say this is because this is important for you. Um, we're gonna post like any scholarship things, reminders of deadlines, um, even some things throughout the summer. So please be sure you're following us on Instagram. And then I wanna show you some highlights on the Counseling Canvas course. The reason why I'm gonna show you this is because it's gonna be um, basically the place where you go to get a lot of the information that we're gonna cover today. So I'm gonna pop over to the, um, the Canvas course. If you do not have, if you're not already um, have access to this or you haven't added it to your courses, um, I want you to be sure that you go, um, that you either email me and I'll put my email in the chat real quick. All right, email me if you do not have access because I will manually add you. Everyone has been invited, but I think the invitations will probably expire after so much time. Um, and if you go to your dashboard, I know you guys have a lot of courses. Mine's gonna look different than yours. It's called Battlefield, so BFHS Counseling Student and Student Services. Mine's purple. You can obviously, you can change the colors here. Um, when you go into the course, I just wanna point out a couple things. One, all of that academic advising stuff, all the scheduling stuff, we're gonna scroll down and you're gonna to go to academic advising, that little icon. This is everything you need to know about academic advising. Even, well, I guess you're all, you'll all be at Battlefield next year. Um, no, but I don't, there's no senior class at Gainesville High School. So I want you to scroll to the very bottom. And this is what I wanna point out. There are charts in here for you to compare. Do I wanna do a general um, history class or an AP class? What is that like? How can I prepare? Um, I wanna know a little bit more about the career and technical education electives. There's a whole chart in there to tell, like help you know what to expect. We compare AP classes, we compare general to dual enrollment to AP. And there's also the SALC and SALT applications. Um, be sure to check those out. The last thing I wanna point out about academic advising is at the bottom, all this stuff about college, like which one is better AP dual enrollment? What are colleges even looking at? Everything is in here. Um, long story short, there is no better. Um, dual enrollment and AP are considered the same. They're weighted the same um, in Prince William County, which communicates to institutions that we consider them both rigorous courses. They're both college level courses and they're both gonna be a little different. So you wanna be sure you check out the charts above. But down here, I give you some examples of how would this course credit transfer to college? Okay, AP is gonna be always based on how you do on that AP exam, okay, that you take in May. 
Um, dual enrollment is going to be based on the grade that you earn in the class. Okay, dual enrollment is college course work. So you actually have a NOVA transcript that you send to your college once you decide where you're going to attend. So dual enrollment is college credit. The class you take for dual enrollment may or may not be one that you need for your degree. However, it could be an elective class that meets one of your elective requirements in college. So keeping all of that in mind, these are some links to just some of the, the general state colleges that come up that are really popular, but you can always go to a college's registrar website to evaluate how would this AP course be looked at at this school? Would I even earn college credit? Um, does this dual enrollment class fit my major? Okay, these are important questions to ask yourself. And all of this information is in the counseling Canvas course. Every student has access to it. Your parents have access if they are an observer. All right, where was this? This was on the home page in the counseling course. So we scroll down. All of our events are in here, by the way. So we work, everything we record is gonna be, is right in here. Academic advising is what we just went over. The other thing I want you guys to know is please make sure that you have reviewed the 11th grade career development um, lesson. This is our counseling lesson for 11th graders. Everything that we're gonna talk about today has been touched on in this lesson, but this lesson goes into deep, greater detail and also talks about the changes in the economy, that jobs that you might do and businesses you might create in the future don't even exist right now. Um, technology is changing all the time, so being mindful of that. And then this is a video on how to do the do what you are personality assessment, which every junior should be completing. So make sure you do that. And if you don't know how, this is the step-by-step -step guide. It's in Naviance student. And the reason why this is important is it, it's basically the Myers-Briggs and it gives you information on yourself. Sometimes it's spot on and other times I hear from students that it's nothing like them and we they retake it. So the, the big takeaway is when you answer the questions in the survey, you wanna answer them very honestly based on your own um, opinion, not on how you might be perceived by others. That way your results are actually accurate. I use this a lot with students when they say, I don't know what I wanna major in. That's okay, because we're, we're, we're gonna go into that, but I do wanna be able to see your results so that I can help you. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the home page, And then I wanna point out one other thing. Everybody has access to every single thing in this module. So just because you're an 11th grader doesn't mean you can't look at the 12th grade um, post high school planning. This is really important because I'm gonna do an overview today, but this is literally all the detailed information about applying to college, how do I do the application? How do I find my best fit? So there's a three-step process to this. One, like navigating Naviance, making sure you know um, how to use it because that's how you get your transcripts, your letters of recommendation once you become a senior. So you don't have access to that information yet until you become a senior and Naviance changes you to a senior. That'll happen in August. Okay, so what you can focus on right now is the best fit, which is how do I know which college is actually the one I want, uh, ones that I want to attend. And I go into a lot of detail, this is the video. And then the college application. I go into a lot of detail about the essay. Um, we're gonna have more workshops on the essay writing in April. Um, so Common App has already come out with their essay prompts for the fall. Um, remember those are your personal statements. So that's one essay that goes to multiple colleges, which is different than the short answer are the supplemental essays, which are things you write for each college. We'll talk about that later. But this video, I go into a ton of detail. I also have spreadsheets in here to help keep you organized while you're doing your searches, timelines, frequently asked questions that we get asked all the time while you're filling out your application. Just be mindful that the college applications that are available right now are not the ones that you should be filling out. Um, August is when the Common App application becomes available and when most college application, ap most colleges release their fall 2021 application, okay? So because you'll be applying for 2022 um, school year, okay? So that's the senior portal. Um, I also have it broken down into colleges. So 
if you want to get a little bit more information about like the four-year college versus community college, hey, let's throw some military in there and do some ROTC, or I want to start with a trade or workforce, all of this is available to you, okay? So again, emails in the chat. If you don't have access to this, please let me know. Everybody should have been invited to this course, um, but we'll get you situated if not. Okay, we're doing okay? Okay, so let's jump back over. Let me see here. Since the personal statement prompts are out, are we allowed to start drafting ours? Absolutely, yeah, personal statement um, um, prompts are out. So you can go to College Board and pick a statement and start working on it. Um, in April, I'm gonna be advertising a workshop, a boot camp, an essay boot camp every Monday um, in April. And it's going to give you some really good tips. And I want, I would prefer that you wait, but you can of course look through the prompts and see what sticks out to you because this is gonna be a different essay than anything you've written before. Um, and personal statements are very different than um, supplemental essays, which are when like Virginia Tech has a, a question that they ask you and you only have 250 words to answer it. And we'll talk about that in April, but you can absolutely, it's never too early to start working on an essay. You can always draft it, no problem. Okay, so let me bounce back over to my PowerPoint just so I can stay on track. There's so many things about all of this that I could talk to you guys about. So. Let's see here from current slide. All right, so you see the whole slide, right? Looks pretty yep. clean. Okay, awesome. All right, so let's just keep rolling. I really wanna point this out that um, what's the best fit for you right now might change in a year, might change in two years. And you wanna give yourself grace to pivot along the way. So of course, this is, um, a, prim this is a primarily college planning workshop but I do wanna recognize going into the trades and apprenticeships, um, that's a great way to get your education paid for, earn, a, earn um, a skill that nobody can take from you, and then maybe go to school later. Remember your life, you're gonna live so much, more long, so much longer than you've already lived, if you can imagine that. So give yourself grace to know that you're gonna follow your curiosities um, and a combination of all of this could take place. What is happening? I think it's time. Okay, so hopefully, okay. So what should you be doing now for your junior year this spring? Obviously review the do what you are personality assessment. Take a look at that. We're really gonna focus on what are you curious about um, and thinking about what you might wanna study in college. A big takeaway is not every college has the same major, okay? And the major that you might be interested in is gonna maybe be worded differently at each institution which means the classes that you take for that major might look, might be different at each school. So the main point is for you to think about, well, what topic am I curious about that I wanna study overarching? And then from there, you're gonna think about, well, what are some schools that I think would be a good fit for me where I would be really comfortable and I'll thrive where there's opportunities. And then you wanna check their majors and make sure they have that major, okay? So like Virginia Tech doesn't have nursing. So if I have any future Hokies on today, you're not gonna go to tech and study nursing, okay? So just being mindful that certain colleges have certain majors and that the names of those majors can look different. Um, in Navion Student, there is a platform called Supermatch, which is awesome because you can put in all the criteria that you want in an institution and it will populate with all the colleges in the country that meet your criteria free search engine. It's just a little temperamental. So be sure when you put your major in that you are very vague. So like business, just put business. Don't get fancy and select one of the really detailed majors because some of the, some schools might not populate because they don't have that particular wording of the major. So very broad searching, but it will help you to get a list of schools that you may have otherwise not considered. Of course, we all know of some schools off the top of our head that are very popular, um, but going to a school just because it's popular is not the plan. The plan is for you to go to a school that's gonna be your best fit, where you're gonna thrive, be the top of your class and get internship opportunities um, where you can get the job that you want. All right, at the end of the day, we want you to get that job. So 
Okay, so a degree is not always the same at every school. We talked about that. Battlefield Academic Advising, we talked about that. Check out the advising page so that you can take a deeper look of what's going to be most beneficial to me. I did meet with JMU this morning, and they just, again, reiterated how important curriculum choices are. So curriculum choices are making sure that you're having some level of rigor. This doesn't mean you need to take all AP classes, all dual enrollment classes for all four years. It does mean that you want to continue with the same level of rigor each year and also focus on the areas that you're strong in while giving yourself a break in the other areas. Like if you don't like history, maybe don't take dual enrollment or AP history. All right. Instead, focus on your math and science or your English. And that's okay. We want you to have a balance, but you do need to do well in these courses. We don't want you to get a D or an F right, in any of these courses that are also um, rigorous. Um, colleges are looking at your classes to see, hmm, I wonder how you'll do in our class, well, or in our college. The best way to compare that is to see how you have done in a rigorous course at your school, all right? And remember, rigor for us is basically weighted courses, um, AP dual enrollment, um, pre-AP or honors, um, let's talk about SAT and ACT testing. Okay, with COVID, a lot of things have been up in the air. And something that I want you to be mindful of is ACT and SAT testing is important for merit-based scholarships. So this is money that you can earn based on your grades. Oftentimes, the institution also needs to have um, a copy of your SAT or ACT scores for merit-based scholarships. And the other factor is if you're considering applying to maybe a low risk school, a school where you're like, of course I'll get in, but you wanna do the honors program at that school just to um, get more opportunities, do some research and challenge yourself, those honors programs might also require the SAT or ACT. So long story short, while many colleges have moved to test optional, which is really wonderful because many of us are not great at testing, so our test score is not an accurate representation of our abilities, the test scores are sometimes needed for honors program applications or merit-based scholarships. So consider taking the SAT or ACT at least one time so you have it available if you need it for merit-based scholarships or an honors program. Remember SAT, ACT, you can take it twice, they'll super score. Big changes, no more essay for the SAT and no more subject tests. They have done away with that. Um, they released a news article um, maybe a couple weeks ago. So that's something to think about. You're just taking the SAT, just the test portion, English and math. Okay. Um, besides the National Merit Scholarship, are there any other SAT or PSAT based scholarships? Yes, thank you for asking. So College Board, they own the SAT and they own um, AP, right? They make a lot of money off of us. Um, they um, offer opportunities scholarships. So if you Google opportunity scholarships by College Board, this whole process that you're doing that we're gonna go over today, you can put your name, it's basically you put your name in the hat, you check off and you, you log into your college board and you say, I did the FAFSA, I'm applying to college, I did Khan Academy to prepare for the SAT, I took the SAT. For each one of these steps, you can be put in a drawing to earn a $500 scholarship, a $200 scholarship. The last scholarship I think is a $20,000 scholarship, um, if you do all five. These are task-oriented scholarships, which is wonderful because you don't need to write an essay. And it's not about your grades. It's just about doing what you're already gonna be doing. So this is the College Board Opportunity Scholarships. I'll put it in the chat. All right, check that out. Um, as far as other scholarships, I have a 20 minute scholarship workshop that's recorded all my tips and tricks. Um, we're gonna go into finances here today as well. So, and then everything we hear about, we post in Naviance. All right, letters of recommendation. Um, just a little point on this. It depends on the college. You do not need to be asking all of your teachers for letters right now. You might need one letter for like multiple schools. You might need up to three letters, which means you'd ask three teachers. You don't know this until you have your list of schools. So you need to come up with your list of five to seven schools that you want to apply to 
um, that are varying risks or moderate to low risk schools where you're likely to get in, you know, you'll feel comfortable there. Um, and see what they require. We do not want you to ask like five teachers for different letters because the system will only let teachers send to the schools that allow them to send letters to. So long story short, this is in the Naviance platform. So if you ask five teachers for letters and two teachers send their letters, well, there's not a spot left for the others, which means they spent time writing this letter that's not even needed and they can't get it to the school. So please be very mindful that you're only asking for what you need. And the way you know what you need is after you make your college list. We typically write letters. Sometimes we write them in the summer, normally in the fall. So it's okay for you to wait to ask a teacher for a letter for, till the end of the year, even till the fall, that's absolutely okay. Let's see. Okay, let's dive into the college searching process. Okay, big, big thing here. This is student-centered. Please ignore the hype. This isn't about wearing the awesome, like getting the special hoodie and, you know, getting into that name brand school. It's really, um, the research has shown that students that are successful are the students that can graduate towards the top of their class and also be connected to the community of the college they are attending. So we want you to go to one, a place where you're gonna feel connected and comfortable, but two, a place where you're gonna get opportunities to do internships, do research opportunities, um, get to know your professors and get involved, all right? And this is all about following your curiosity. What are you curious about learning? How, what are you curious about contributing to? All right, so this whole part of the process is about you looking inward, finding your intrinsic motivation. So what gets you going? Like what gets you even like interested in this? Like, yes, I wanna go to college, but what am I curious about? And we want you to follow that. If you're going to some no-name school that we've never heard of and you have a full ride, there is a lot to celebrate there. A full ride education is worth up to $100,000, which means this institution is saying that you're incredibly valuable, but it's also an institution where you feel, you know, you're the expert, that you will thrive and you will get opportunities because you looked into the program, you know there's um, internship opportunities and you know that there's research opportunities. Um, study abroad, all for no cost. That's incredibly valuable. So big takeaway, follow your intrinsic motivation and um, that will help you to come up with a list of schools that are, will be a good match for you versus just a list of schools that like your friends or your family maybe went to or applied to. All right, sorry, sometimes my slide changes by itself. I had a question come in for institutions like IVs that have traditionally placed a higher emphasis on SAT subject tests. Will AP exams matter more? Yes, thank you for asking that. Uh, we'll go into that a little bit more um, soon, but yes, what we're seeing is some schools that would have used the SAT subject test or are saying we'll allow you to do test optional, which is based on your GPA. Like if you have a 3.0 or higher, you can apply. Um, they might say, well, we want to see your AP exam scores, or we want to see um, um, a piece of work that you've done in the classroom or a project that you've done. So we are seeing more supplementals, which are as additional documents that you might add to your application. Okay. And that could very well happen. Okay. So Navion student, this is literally where you are going to get everything. So how do we get to Navion student? You go to our school's website. Counseling Center, Naviance student. Okay, the login, um, this can be a little tricky. Just you log in through Clever. It's the single sign on and you're gonna use your Office 365. And then you're gonna say, I'm a student and you're gonna put Battlefield High School. If you want to log in the traditional way, the Naviance login is actually your student number and then whatever password you created. Um, it did away with generic passwords for protection. So if you can't get in that way, you can always click forgot password and your email will get sent to for your Prince William County account to have your, your password reset. Just only click forget password one time because it takes the system a little bit of time to get you logged in. Long story short, we are going to encourage you to log in through the single sign on, all right? This is a, just a, an image of this um, super match. 
in Navion. So this is that um, research platform that I was telling you about where you can put in all the criteria that you might be interested in or that you want in an institution and it will populate with a list of colleges that meet your needs. Remember with academics, be very vague, like just biology, just um, business. The more detailed you get, the difficult the survey gets. And I love this quote, um, college is a match to be made, not a prize to be won. Okay, so sometimes, you know, we're like, well, this person, like basically you're, you're courting a college to choose you and to be all the things that this college wants you to be, to be accepted. And we really want to dismantle that and we want you to be who you are. And I'm running into this difficulty with students that, you know, we don't know who we are because we've been really focused on who we should be this whole time. And this is a time to pause and think about what do you want in this school? Where will you thrive and further find yourself versus further making yourself into somebody that you feel like you need to be? All right, that's the counselor in me. I have to have to throw that out there. So college is a match to be made, not a prize to be won. Okay, the deep dive into majors. This is really, really huge. Okay, this is literally what you're paying for when you go to college. This is like you turn 16, you went to a car dealership and you went to go buy your car. All right, you go and you test out all these different cars. This is what you're doing with majors. You are making sure that this major fits your interest. And I want you to get all the way to the point where you're on the website for the major at the college, which is always under academics. You're gonna find the majors. And then you're gonna look for something called the advising list or the course requirements. And they're gonna list out the classes you would take each semester for this major, right? print them, save them, and you're gonna compare them to all these other colleges so that you know within yourself, wow, a bachelor's degree in science with a concentration in business administration at VCU. Okay, well, this is the level of math I need to take. Um, this is the type of business classes I'm gonna take. All right, so this is good to know. Well, what other, is there an internship? You know, what else is going on here? Um, so be really mindful. We want you to focus on that you're gonna to go to a school that has what you wanna study because that's what you're purchasing. You're purchasing the opportunity to earn a major that says that you have been taught what you need to be in this profession. Okay, I got a question. Do we find these majors on the college's website? Yes, absolutely. That's the only place where you'll find them. So first you're gonna figure out, well, what are some schools that I feel like I'd be comfortable at that has what I would, I would find comfortable. So whether it's close to home, um, whether it's rural, urban, um, whether there's more diversity, um, whether it's in a cold climate and a warm climate, all these things are important to our, our comfort level, which helps us to feel safe. Once you have your list of colleges, you're going to go to the college's website, go under academics, and look at the list of majors. Look at the list of majors. And then when you click on the major, you're gonna look for something that says like the, ac the academic advising list or degree requirements. And that's gonna give you this list of classes that you need to take and you're gonna compare it. So this is on the college's website. So this is like VCU. So I could pull up VCU, JMU, George Mason, you know, um, Penn State. And I'm gonna look for, okay, well, I'm interested in business. So I'm gonna see, well, what degrees do they have in business at each of these schools? So that I know, well, actually, I always thought Penn State would be my top choice, but George Mason actually has the literal major with the classes that I actually wanna take, which you would have never guessed. Like you would have been like, oh, really? Like in my backyard, I didn't know. So is it bad that I only took one AP? It's not bad to take one AP. Taking an AP class shows rigor, and if you did well in that class, that demonstrates to an institution that you can do well in college. And I will tell you, um, I have my master's degree from tech um, in counseling. I've had a lot of schooling. AP classes are very rigorous, okay? College is going to feel very different, so you should be very proud of yourself for one, doing that class and doing well in it. Um, but consider for next year, maybe taking another AP class or a dual enrollment class just to continue with that level of rigor, but pick an area where you know you'll thrive. Um, what do we do about college visits during COVID? Yes, college visits. That is what you should be doing, especially during spring break when you'll have more time. Most college visits are virtual. So what this also means is any school that you're interested in, you can go to the website and see 
the dorms. You can see um, a tour of the campus, of the facilities. Most of the times when you go and do a tour in person, they can't show you the dorms because students are on campus. So some schools now that vaccines are getting rolled out, some schools might start to do in-person tours um, in over spring break. That's a very popular time. So look into that, but be mindful when your safety and your comfort level is very important. So look online, most schools have uh, virtual tours. I also have several recordings of tours or not really tours, but where colleges are reps are talking about their school. And that's gonna be under the college's admission page, okay? Where they kind of flaunt themselves and tell you all their awesome things, right? Every college is really awesome in its own way. And it's making sure that that awesomeness aligns with your awesomeness. That's, that's a, I'm gonna say that, okay. Um, how many colleges do you think we should visit? It's really gonna be up to you and for you to follow that curiosity. You know, you might say, I already know like three schools I definitely wanna to apply to. So I wanna get a more like comfortable list. So I wanna have about five schools. So let's keep looking at maybe a couple more to see what other schools might help me to feel comfortable where I know I'll thrive. Okay, so the goal is to have about uh, five to seven schools that you will apply to because I know you all work really hard. You deserve to have options after you apply, okay? Those admission letters come back to you. Well, I don't want you to just get admitted to one school. I want you to get admitted to multiple schools that also have multiple financial aid packages that help you to thrive, okay? Thrive financially is also to thrive individually and to thrive um, in a comfort level where you know I'm not taking out debt. I know my family is not struggling because I'm going to this school. So being sure that you are applying to schools that could also show up um, to you with money. And I'll, and I'll talk about that in more detail. Um, yeah, if you decide not to continue with high school, reach out to me um, and there's tons of options um, if you have other plans for after high school. So please reach out to me about that. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna keep rolling. I wanna respect your time. Okay. Choosing an institution, return on investment. All right, we wanna remember, unfortunately, in college has become a business, okay? So this is also a business where they're making money, you're the consumer. So you also need to think about, well, I'm also being advertised to, okay? They have awesome marketing departments now um, and college is not what it used to be. So instead of getting caught up in the hype, really focus on, well, what is offered to me at this school? Who's teaching my classes? Is it primarily graduate students? Is it an adjunct professor, which is somebody who works in the field and they maybe teach some classes at night, which could be really interesting to like learn from a professor who's working in the industry. Is it a professor that's mainly doing research and I just have like a class that I have to teach to kind of keep myself here um, to do my research, which could be really enlightening for that professor to share their experience as mainly a researcher. Um, or am I primarily a teaching professor? My focus is to grow my students. This will look different at every school, okay? So please, you know, when you're thinking about, well, what questions should I ask a college? You should ask, well, who, what, who's teaching these classes? Um, are there research opportunities? Um, are there honors programs where I can maybe go to this school where I know I'm gonna get in, um, but I wanna amp it up a little bit, so I wanna do the honors program, and what's the benefit of that program to me? Um, are there internships and co-ops? Co-op is when you're doing an internship in college and you're, at, you're getting paid for it at the same time. So yeah, you're not paying the school, you're actually getting paid by the, the organization that you're working for. Remember, while you're in college, I want to encourage you to get a job, get an internship, um, offer yourself to be to work in um, as a research um, assistant because all of these things build your resume. Remember, everybody will be graduating at the end of about four or five years with their degree. So you wanna think about what sets me apart is my resume and what's on my resume is my experiences. So how have you contributed over these next four years while you're in college? Um, so thinking about building your resume while you're in college. All of this is important because the big goal is for you to get that job with as minimal debt as possible while you're in college at a school that you also feel comfortable at, right? Where you can thrive. That's the goal. Okay, I got a question. Okay. 
So I'd, I'd like to have eight to 10 schools out, out of state on my list. So how would you recommend breaking down reach target safety? Yep, I'm about to get there. Perfect, perfect timing. All right, so let's first talk about the admission experience. So remember, a match to be made, not a prize to be won. Um, where is the quiz, um, the About Me quiz? Okay, so the quiz is in Navion's under, you can go under the About Me tab and under My Assessments, and it's the Do What You Are personality assessment. You can also go to the Counseling Canvas course under the 11th grade lesson, and it, there's the link in there that shows you what to do. All right, so admission. What in the world's gonna happen with admission? Really tough things happen um, throughout every year. And we're gonna go over a case study. I'm gonna to talk to you guys about some of the difficult things that I, I process with students. So first we talked about like, how do I kind of like organize my risk with these schools and out of state schools, in-state schools, Ivy Leagues, competitive, whatever, all this. Okay, about five to six schools. If you're applying to like 10, Okay, maybe that's because you have more schools in your high risk category, which is what I kind of call like your dream schools. Okay, this is like where you're like, Miss Bridges, I will not be able to sleep at night if I don't find out if I got into like maybe these two really competitive schools. I've checked the scattergrams. I know it's a high risk school for me. I know it's not likely that I'll get in based on my grades, but I have really good experience that I could offer this institution. I want to apply. I would say yes apply, do that. Don't have regret about not applying. But what we don't want is students applying to like just 10 schools that they threw a dart at a map and they're like, I don't know, we'll just keep applying. Let's do 20 schools. Okay, that's getting out of hand. That's when I wanna say, hey, let's meet. I wanna know what are you curious about? What are you trying to um, get from a college? What do you want in an institution? Remember, you're the customer. If I'm going shopping, I know what shoes I want. I know what, what I know what they want. I know what I want to use them for, and I know um, what my comfort level is. All right, so I want you to think about that. Be very mindful. A high risk school is a school where ugh, it's not likely I'm going to get in, but I want I want I need to know. I need to know. All right, so apply. Moderate school is the school where I don't know. You know, I'm kind of on the cusp. It looks like I, I might get in. I kind of meet the GPA. I took my SAT. I kind of fall right in line. And it's a school that I'm gonna, like I, I feel comfortable at. And, and a low risk school is a school where you go miss bridges. Of course, I'm gonna get into that school. Look at my grades. Look at what I've been doing. I'd go, yeah, okay, low risk school. So it's a school that you're likely to get into, but it's a school that you want to go to. That's the key. If this was piled up with like five schools, I would be like so excited for the student because there are also schools that the student wants to go to. Okay, so one, we know, okay, the admissions, you're probably gonna get in, but since it's also a low risk school and it's a school that you absolutely want to go to, you are only applying to schools where you will see, you would see yourself going to. Okay, that's very important. You're only applying to schools that you will attend. Okay, do not apply to a school where you're like my, my family twisted my arm or my best friend's applying, so I don't know. Because what has happened is students do not get into any other school but the school that they didn't want to go to, okay? And then you're like, oh, you're devastated, right? Or you get into your dream school with no money and you get into one of your low risk schools and your family's like, I'm sorry, sweetie, I'm not paying $80,000 a year for you to go to this school when you have a full ride at this other school right? Oh, so upsetting. These are real things that have happened and happen all the time. So you are only, please work with your family and your friends to only apply to schools where you would actually consider going and make sure that you have some schools that are low risk where you're likely to get in. Okay, so it's about getting into the right school, not the brand name school. Okay, I want to encourage you guys to like cover up the names of the schools if you can in your head and just look at the major and the program. All right, every school has an amazing alumni program um, and connection. So while all of that is true and good, being at a school where you will thrive and has the program you wanna study is really important versus the brand, the name of the school, okay? All right, I wanted to show you this. This is um, that risk I was talking about. Ms. Bridges, where in the world do I find this data? This is battlefield students that were accepted in the green and denied in the red, and they were waitlisted in the blue, where do I find this? This is in Naviance student, okay? You can go into Naviance, 
type in any college, go to the admission page, the admission tab on that college's website in Naviance, and it's gonna pull up battlefield criteria. So battlefield admission data from the last, I think it's like 12 years now, okay? What's really gonna be important, okay, this black line here shows you average. Okay, the average SAT score is um, about 1300 for this school. Okay, average GPA weighted. Okay, but, um, Princeton County only reports weighted GPA. Okay, so some schools might ask for unweighted. That's something you have to calculate, which I can show you how to do that. But weighted GPA on average is like a 4.1. Okay. So this would mean this is a moderate risk school. If I'm here on the blue, on this black line in the blue area, ugh, you know, I'm waitlisted or I get in, I don't know, I don't know. This is just based on information, on, on academics, okay? So this doesn't take into account your essay, who you are, your experiences, what you will bring to the school. All of those things I just mentioned are very, very important. However, a school needs to know that academically you can handle their rigor. You can handle their, um, their curriculum at their college. So that's why your coursework is important. Who you are is equally important, but they also wanna know, well, if you didn't do well freshman year, tell me about it in your essay. Please tell me that you know, I really struggled transitioning from middle school to high school and I moved from across the country and I didn't feel connected and I really struggled. Or um, you know, this current freshman year class, my freshman year, it was a COVID pandemic, right? Like, Context matters. We are human beings. We experience life differently. We have different things coming at us all the time. So this is a Naviance. Please check the scattergram for every school. If I start talking to a student and they're applying to like, they're like, I want to do all the Ivy League schools. I'm like, awesome. Pull them up in scattergrams. And no, because we have very, very competitive students at Battlefield um, who, you know, high risk is high risk. It's shocking to me sometimes when some of our amazing school students don't get into some of these very competitive schools. So um, we can always talk about how to set yourself apart, but you would have already done that by now. These are, this is about being who you are and not changing yourself to fit a school. So check these scattergrams. Um, this is really good data, okay? But it, I don't want it to turn you away, but I do want you to have those three buckets, high risk, moderate risk, and low risk know where the school kind of falls for you. And also know that these GPAs, big, big important part, this GPA, these GPAs reported are the senior year GPAs of these students. So when this student graduated from Battlefield, they had like a 4.9. You see this guy up here, this person, this female, this male, this there, whoever, this person. Okay, we don't know. So, okay, they, yeah, they got into the school. Their GPA was at the end of their high school. So all of those classes you took your senior year get factored into your GPA. Okay, something that I want you guys to know is you are the first senior class to benefit from the enormous rollout of weighted classes in Prince William County. Okay, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is if you took advanced programming or, hold on, let me go back. Oh, where's my mouse? Um, advanced programming or advanced computer information systems or um, I don't know, another advanced course. It's weighted for you guys now. So that means that it impacted your GPA in a way that it has never impacted another student's GPA. So I would say that this graph is about accurate for you guys. Your classes are weighted in, a, in, a, in an inflated way um, than they've ever been before. So really look at this accurately. Don't, don't, don't be like, well, you know, I still have another year. Absolutely, you have another year. Um, but the way that our GPAs are, are weighted right now this year um, are gonna be significant. So um, yes, you'll have more classes, but just be mindful of that, okay? Okay, so this whole admission process, what is this feeling like? Okay. There's the Common App, there's the Coalition, and then there's applications that you apply to on the college's website. The benefit to the Common App and the Coalition is it's one application you can send to multiple schools. So whatever school that um, is, part, is partnered with Common App or Coalition, so like VCU is Common App, Virginia Tech Common App, 
Um, some schools offer you multiple choices. Okay, so you do one common app and you send it to multiple schools. Well, some students have said, well, this is so easy. I'm just gonna add to cart like five more, 10 more schools. So what this has done is it's inflated the applicant pool, but it's also provided increased access, right? It's less work, less time. Um, however, the fees don't go away. Okay, so you're still paying for each individual application. All right, $80 a pop um, on average, between $60 to $80 a pop. Um, some of those applications are much more. So plan for that. Um, but an example is I wanna tell you two years ago, Virginia Tech had about 35,000 applications. Well, they only had 5,000 spots their freshman year, okay? So that year, let me go back. That year, that application pool felt like so many more students didn't get into tech who might have gotten in five or 10 years ago. All right, there are different factors that impact this. We know that there's the common app. So students are just applying to many schools. This is why we don't want you to do this. We want you to focus on where do you actually wanna go so that these applicant pools are not inflated. But we also, I don't know if you guys remember um, George Mason, they went to the final four basketball about probably eight years ago now. That next year, their admission pool was huge. Thousands and thousands and thousands of kids applied from across the country because now all of a sudden George Mason's on the map. This happens, right? We know there are many factors that impact admission. If that pool is huge, the likelihood of getting into that first choice school, if it's competitive, is going to feel smaller, right? So there's going to be more overflow to your second choice or your third choice school. This is why we only want you to apply to schools that you would actually consider attending. Okay, I got a question. Do colleges know what other colleges you're applying to? They do not know from the Common App or the Coalition. Um, sometimes they can see on the FAFSA. So when you do the FAFSA or the CSS profile for financial aid, um, sometimes they can see what other schools you have listed. Um, they might have done away with that last year. I don't recall, but that would be the only place where they would see that. On your Common App, they don't see that. So the only way they would know if you applied to other schools is if you accidentally like left in a, a college's name for another college's essay, right? Don't do that. Um, so otherwise, no, they won't know. Um, but we do want you to focus on just applying to about five to seven schools that you would actually consider attending. So if I go to a small school, would your job resume be compared to someone who went to a bigger school? Okay, so your job resume is gonna be compared to anybody else who's applying to that job, okay? So you graduate, well, Ms. Bridges, Ms. Bridges, whatever organization, I'm interviewing for biomedical engineers. Okay, so I have three candidates, one who has experience and graduated from a no-name school, I don't know, but they have a ton of experience, um, a student who went to a very popular school, and that's about all they have on their resume, and a, school, a student who went to a school that I've never heard of, who did an internship, has job shadowing experience, did a research assistant position. I'm probably gonna go with somebody who has experience and or somebody who sought after experience at their college by doing research opportunities, job shadowing or internships. Because that can you can change what that was like for you um, by communicating it in an interview and say, like speaking to your experience as though like it was like you were getting paid for it. It's still experience just because you didn't get paid for it as an intern doesn't mean that it's not valuable. So the size of your school does not matter. Where you go truly doesn't matter unless you're not successful. Like if you, if you're, if you go to a school and you're like, oh, this didn't work out for me, that's okay. I want you to pivot and find the school that would what is the best fit for you. Because the goal is to get through school, learn what you need to learn, but gain the experiences that will help you to get the job that you want. So you're not gonna be compared to schools based on where you went. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, another Hokie, like that's really cool. But like, if that other Hokie didn't do anything, it's not gonna help me to wanna hire that person, right? So it's all about what you do with where you go, okay? What you do where, where, where you're attending, that's important, not where you go, which is something that, we don't hear enough of, um, but that's what we are seeing with research. Um, and many, many working professionals um, speak at large conferences about this. Um, Malcolm Gladwell has an amazing Google Zeitgeist talk about the data that he broke down um, from Ivy League students and that um, students that actually were at the top of their class at a no-name school had more publications in journalism than those of their um, at um, more name, name brand Ivy League schools. So it's all about what you do 
with what you learn. Okay. And no bash to Ivy League. I mean, like, it's all about going to the best fit school. So keep that in mind for you, best fit school for you. Okay. This is like some of that like sad case study stuff that I want you to know about. Finances, money, the money talk, the money tree, all of this, this is a family discussion. This is not something to wait on because I've had too many students do all the right things. They shot for their dreams. They got into the school. They did all the right things. They got accepted and then they got no money. And they also got into a school that they didn't really want to go to, but they got a $15,000 scholarship. And so what was that conversation like with their family? Like, oh, sweetie, $80,000 a year or $5,000 at this really great school. But you're saying you're, you know, you don't really want to go there. This money conversation is super important because you're avoiding the dream crushing. Okay. And the money conversation is, hey, family, hey, guardian, how much money do I have to pay out of pocket for college? All right. If they're like, what are you talking about? We don't have any money. Like, okay, obviously you're going to dig into scholarships, but you want, when you're looking at colleges, you want to check the financial aid website of these schools to see what merit-based scholarships they have and what needs-based scholarship. Okay, needs, you don't determine your need. The need is determined by the government um, through the FAFSA or the CSS profile based on a private school or public school. But this is a conversation for you to have now so that you know, you know, is that gonna be a factor that I need to consider when I'm choosing my college? Um, and it's a factor for everybody, but it's, you know, to what great extent, you know, is that something I really wanna put in there to make sure I'm not graduating with $100,000 in student loans when I know I wanna to go to grad school or I know I wanna to go to medical school, all right? Undergrad is the time to save your money, um, get your education, get your footing, um, the foundational skills that you need. If you want to go to grad school or become a doctor, that's where you're going to spend your money, okay? That's where people are going to say, where did you do your residency? Where did you go to med school? They're not going to be asking, where did you get your bio degree um, or your English degree? Because the higher your education, that's your specialty. Um, so keep that in mind. Can juniors fill out the FAFSA? Um, no, you cannot fill out the FAFSA. Thank you so much. Really good point. The FAFSA will be available to you in October. Okay, that's when the government releases it. There are some changes. So at the end of this, um, you guys probably saw, I sent out in the announcements and in an email, I have some financial aid discussions coming up, which are really great for your family and for you to attend um, that really breaks this down. Um, it's with Luann Lee and she's an expert in this. Um, so to save money, do you think it's best to do two years at a community college and then transfer 100%? Okay, going to a community college, you immediately save at least $40,000, all right, and you earn two degrees, okay, you earn your associate's degree, and then you transfer, you have two more years, and you earn your bachelor's degree. It's a fantastic business decision, it's a fantastic um, academic decision. Nova is one of the top community colleges in the country, plus taking AP classes and dual enrollment now, as long as you know that they'll fit in your major, is another way to save money. So, this thing up here in the corner, net price calculator, this is required by the federal government for every college to have a net price calculator, which means you and your family can go to the college's website or just Google George Mason net price calculator. And your family, you're going to type in information about yourself, about your family's income, and it's going to spit out to you what your net price is. Net price is the money you should have in your pocket. Okay, what? No, I don't. Nobody has thousands of dollars away just hanging out in their pocket to spend on college for multiple children or whatever. So, net price is the money that you or your family has to come up with that isn't being provided by the government or by so student loans and or by um, scholarships or grants. This is money that you would need to be on a payment plan with the college to pay it monthly. You have to pay it off in ten months. Every year, you, your parents take out loans. They might refinance their home to take money out. Um, these are ways that you and your family can come up with the money, but I, be sure to check the net price calculator for every college, especially any private school. Private schools are awesome in that they have their own endowments. They have their own money that they can use any way they want. And um, public schools, they have money also, but there's stipulations to how they can spend it. You know, Is it a merit-based scholarship? If it's a needs-based scholarship, it needs to be allocated based on the FAFSA 
Um, so that's why it's important to make sure you do the FAFSA for public schools and the CSS profile for private schools. We'll go into that in the fall. That's not something I want you guys to worry about right now, but I do want you to have this family conversation about cost. Look at the net price calculator for every school that you're considering applying to. Average Virginia State is about twenty to twenty-eight thousand dollars a year. Tuition goes up six to eight percent every year. Okay, so you might be paying twenty thousand dollars your freshman year. Well, your sophomore year is going to be more expensive. Junior year is going to cost even more. Senior year is going to be the most expensive. Okay, because the cost goes up every year. It's horrible. I know. <laughs> I'm coming to you with um. I have my own student debt and loans and but also paid my way through college on my own. So, you know, we all have a journey and we all have context to um, this financial discussion. And that's why it's important to be very transparent with your family, um, with your guardians, um, with any mentors, anybody who's helping you with this process so that you know what's available to you. Um, be mindful that many um, elite schools um, don't offer merit scholarships, okay? So UVA, they do not offer scholarships for you having good grades. They, they're they like, yes, you should be the top of your class and coming to UVA, um, but they only offer needs-based. So based on your family's financial need determined by the government, um, but they do offer like the Jefferson scholarship, which is one full ride to UVA. They do some really competitive scholarships. Um, we have not had anybody at Battlefield um, fully progress through the Jefferson. We've had people nominated um, but just to give you an idea of how competitive it is, you know, we obviously have amazing students at our school, um, but just keep that in mind when you are looking at some of these schools, um, elite institutions, they oftentimes do not offer merit-based scholarships based on your grades. So keep that in mind, do the net price calculator. Um, let me see if I cover everything else. Okay, yeah, if you're like, I don't need the money, I'm good please do the FAFSA anyways, because if a college does wanna offer you a merit-based scholarship, so say you um, apply to VCU and VCU is like, here's $10,000, but we need a FAFSA on file to release the funds. Okay, make sure you still do the FAFSA if you're like, eh, I'm good, I don't, I don't need any um, loan money from the government or anything. You still wanna get that done. Again, not until October, your senior year. So hang tight on, on doing the FAFSA. Okay. Application overview, I hope we're all doing okay. I know we're at one o'clock, so I'm keeping that in mind. I'm gonna keep going. I do wanna make sure I go over this overview for you. Do you accept that um, athletic scholarships if it's a small school? Okay, athletic scholarships are absolutely an option um, depending on the school. So is it a D1 or D2 school? Um, uh, do they offer that sport in, in the division and did you do the NCAA eligibility center? Make sure you do that. Submit, uh, we'll submit your grades, your transcript to them to make sure that you're eligible. And then a college can recruit you. They can absolutely go through that process. We've had students that earn um, athletic scholarships, very competitive, but definitely something to look out for. And you will know before we will, if you earn an athletic scholarship, you would be already being courted by a coach or by a school. Um, your coach would be talking to other coaches. There's a lot that goes into that. Um, and then your family would be talking with the institution about, you know, negotiations with your contract um, with the school. So NCAA is something that you need to fill out. Um, so be sure to fill out the NCAA Eligibility Center. Um, uh, make your account and send your transcript there, um, which I can, of course, help you with. And talk to your coach, okay? They'll be they'll be able to inform you. Okay, application overview. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail. I have that whole other recording for you guys, um, but main components, application, everything's electronic, essay. There's two, at least two, you'll do like the personal statement, which is the Common App essay or the Coalition essay, um, or like the main essay on like your JMU application. And then there's supplementals right, which every college that you apply to will have their own couple questions. And then with test scores, we talked about this, SAT, ACT is important to take it at least once in case you wanna be considered for merit-based scholarships, which is typically going to need some information about grades and sometimes um, test scores. So if you haven't taken the test and then you're gonna freak out and I don't want you to freak out. So um, be sure that you schedule, I think there's a March, but the March ones are already 
pass, you can't schedule for that, but the next one's in May. So schedule your May SAT. I know that's the month of AP testing. Um, I think there's one more in June and then the next one won't be till August, um, which I would encourage you to take that also. Anything before senior year, so you don't need to stress. Um, some colleges are looking at AP exam scores, so please don't blow those off. Um, consider, you know, obviously doing well to potentially earn college credit. You got a question? Okay, yep, some people have to go and that's okay. Alrighty, so letters of recommendation, we talked about this, you might need maybe three. Please wait. The, mo the first thing you need to do is make that college list so that you know what you actually need. And remember in, in Canvas, I showed you under the 12th grade curriculum, I have some spreadsheets in there where you can just plug your schools in, plug in how many letters they each need. It's already done for you. You just need to put the information in that pertains to you, like what schools and what are their requirements. You'd find that under their admission page. So all of this you're gonna find under the college's admission page. You won't be able to do that if you don't know what schools you want to apply to. Okay, so you cannot request anything in Naviance, so the letters of recommendation, your transcript, until September, August, September of your senior year. The reason for that, so let me talk about transcripts. Okay, colleges need your senior transcripts. Okay, your senior transcripts include your senior GPA. So we cannot recalculate senior GPA and rank until after summer school. Okay, so some students, they go to summer school. We need to have those courses on your transcript because your senior transcript is everything prior to senior year plus your schedule for senior year. Okay, so we don't have your schedule right until the first day of school. It's not locked in. Like that weekend before my director is still trying to make sure there's no like issues with the schedules and reallocating numbers. So it's really important that if you apply to a school over the summer, you're doing like a rolling application and they're like, you did a tour and they're like, you can apply for free today. That's awesome, but please wait to send them your transcript. You can of course go to student view and download like an unofficial copy of your transcript for them to look at. Um, but we need to wait to send your senior transcript um, to make sure that it is um, your sen everything senior, um, which will include the school profile for Battlefield and the secondary school report, which your counselor does. Um, please note there are some schools that will not take a, a transcript. So that's so bizarre. Okay. This means that that school, so Virginia Tech, Penn State, those are a couple schools, there's some Florida schools, they require you to hand type in your transcripts, like all your grades. Okay. So this would be going to student view, downloading your transcript, and typing in all your grades. Once you decide you get in, you uh, decide to attend, at the end of your senior year, we send them an official transcript, of course, to make sure everything is hunky dory. But please um, be sure that you're checking like if they require a transcript or not. If they don't, you have to type in your grades. I don't have access to that. Your counselor can't do that for you. You'll have to um, do that yourself. It's called a self-reported academic record. Um, and you'll find that on their website. Again, start with your list of schools. Um, so how would you recommend approaching asking for letters of recommendation since we aren't able to make some connections from the past years due to virtual. Okay. Yeah. So email is absolutely fine, um, especially right now. Normally we would say find the teacher in person. That's the, the polite way to do it. But you can always find your teacher's email address on the Battlefield website under staff and email them. It's just a very kind letter. Like I um, I wanted to reach out to request a letter of recommendation. I remember in your class or in your club or in your if it's a coach in, in your in our sport. Um, this is, these are some ways I contributed and some things I really enjoyed, and I would be really um, honored if you would consider writing me a letter, okay? Um, some tips on that are we don't want teachers regurgitating your resume. Your resume is actually going to be something that you put in your application. So we want this teacher, this coach, this mentor to write about how they've experienced you in what, in what environment and how you've contributed. So the best thing is to let this teacher or mentor know is to remind them of the ways that you've contributed in that environment that you've worked with them so that they can write you a strong letter. So email is absolutely fine. If it's a teacher at Battlefield, they're gonna say, hey, we're gonna need that request in Naviance, but you're gonna need to wait until August to send me the request. And the reason for that is because you're not marked as a senior yet. 
in Navion. So we need all of those features. They come alive in Navion in August. So hang tight on sending the actual request. Can I talk to you about my GBA? Yeah, you guys can talk to me about anything. I'm gonna put my um, calendar in right in the chat before we go. Um, one th oh, what teachers should we ask? Um, like, can we ask our freshman or sophomore teachers? If you feel really connected to one of your teachers um, earlier on, you absolutely can. Um, I will say that the junior, senior teachers have more experience writing letters. Um, I do a workshop for the teachers every year to remind them of the things that institutions want to hear about. Um, so be sure that it's somebody who can write about you for you and not just based off of like your resume or what you tell them. Um, but yes, you can absolutely choose somebody early in your school year. If it's somebody not at Battlefield, that's something we're going to have to talk about because they're not going to be in Naviance, which is okay. Um, you'll just send a request to that person outside of Battlefield through your, your common app or your application. Um, do we have to ask a teacher only? What about academic mentors? Yes, mentors, coaches, um, religious organizations, anybody who knows you. Um, be sure that you follow the requirements on the college application. Some colleges might say, I want um, an academic teacher, right, which would be like English, math, science, or social studies. Um, and then they might say one other, somebody who knows you. So just be sure that you're meeting the requirements. Some schools are not as strict. So just um, keep that in mind. I just came to the school, may I ask a teacher? Yeah, yeah. If you're new to Battlefield, you can absolutely ask a teacher from another school. Um, that you might want to work with your school counselor um, and you can talk to me about the detail on that as well because um, I'll help you to make sure we get all that connected. Okay. So somebody asked about community college. Um, it is an incredible financial benefit and it's an incredible academic opportunity. Community college teachers are typically adjunct professors, which means they work in the fields that they're teaching in. Okay. So I almost taught there. I was also like a, a clinical therapist for a while and obviously a school counselor. Um, so to teach and also work in the field is really beneficial to help um, students to learn and to gain information about that industry, um, but also the field of study that you guys are working on. Lower costs, you typically live at home or you go you know, rent somewhere, you don't live on campus at Nova, um, but they have guaranteed admission. So say you're like, oh, I really wanna go to UVA, but I don't have the grades. I say, no problem at all. You can still graduate with your bachelor's degree from UVI. Start in NOVA, earn your two-year degree, do the guaranteed admissions program, transfer to UVA, finish in two years, earn your bachelor's degree. So in four years, you've saved a, a ton of money and you earn two college degrees. So this is really, really beneficial. Um, in all of those ways, there's no application fee, no essay. Um, it's a smooth transition. If you're a dual enrolled student, you're already a NOVA student. So we're just gonna change your account to a college student. Four year college, obviously we talked about bachelor's degree, you go right into um, the school where you will stay at for four years, that's the goal. Um, you're working with professors that are doing all different kinds of things. Um, you're living on campus. And then of course, be sure that you take the SAT or ACT so you have that on hand if you need it. Where is the college search organization graphic Thing in Canvas again. Okay, the scattergram with like the GPA and SAT score, that's a Navion student. And that's when you log in Navion and type in a college, George Mason University, go to admissions and scroll down in Navion student. Okay, and that's okay if anybody has to go, I have this recorded so you can see the rest of it. And um, do most schools require you to live on campus? So freshman year, most, most schools want their freshmen to live on campus freshman year, and you normally cannot have a car. But um, if you go to George Mason, you, can, you don't have to live on campus if you can obviously be a commuter student. Um, so it's really up to you and up to the school and how you guys work that out. But most schools, especially far away, um, if you can't commute, you are going to live on campus freshman year, yeah. But after that, you can normally go get special housing. Okay. Of the application, there's three different kinds, the Common App, the Coalition, and you can apply on the college's website. The only way that you know how, which application they take is to actually look at the college. Okay, so like Virginia Tech, they offer the Common App and the Coalition, so you can choose. So once you have your list of colleges, if you're like, oh, all my schools are Common App, fantastic, you know, I'm gonna start the Common App, I'm gonna do everything in this one place. 
Or if they're in two different places, you know, okay, I'm gonna do these two applications. Um, be sure to focus on um, you know, that intrinsic motivation. We talked about the changes with SAT. Um, College Board is no longer making you take an essay, no subject tests. The cost of education goes up and we talked about that. We're almost done guys. Um, I wanted to give you a little reminder on the application types. All right, big, big thing. This is what I always picture in my head, early decision, binding, picture signing a contract. If I get into this school, no matter what, I'm going. This would be your top choice school um, where money is not a factor. So if it's one of those top private schools, you're ready to spend the $80,000. Um, some schools will let you break the agreement with finances, it all depends, but it's something that we have to inform you guys. Actually, it's super serious that the counselor has to sign a document, your parents have to, your parent or guardian has to sign a document and you have to sign saying that you understand the risks associated with this. Big myth. Applying early decision does not make you more likely to get in. If you get in early decision, you would have gotten in regular decision, okay? It's the same admission criteria in every application type, okay? They can't change it because that's not, that's not, that's breaking their own um, standards for application. Same application criteria, the pool might be different, right? The students applying early decision might be super, super competitive, right? So if they're taking the top off of that, it might be less likely. Um, so please remember early decision is binding. Early action, I'm just taking action early, I'm going. I'm gonna apply early, I'm gonna find out early. The other benefits to applying early is many schools will consider you automatically for scholarships like VCU if you apply early. So it's typically November deadline, um, December deadline. Um, so it's not binding, so you can apply, and then I want you to wait until you get your financial aid packages to lay all those out and to know, well, which one's a good fit for me, which one's showing up for me, right, financially um, and with opportunities. Um, regular decision, it's typically the last application pool. This is going to be typically January, February deadlines, and you find out around April, okay? So obviously, the earlier you apply, the earlier you find out. Um, please note that some schools will not review semester grades, right? So a regular application, you might say, I'm gonna apply regular because my grades previously weren't great. So I wanna show colleges that I, um, I, I can do well because I'm doing well my senior year. So they're gonna see your semester one grades senior year. Okay, some schools like Virginia Tech, they're not gonna look at your senior grades because it's self-reporting. Remember, you typed in all your grades for Virginia Tech. You're not gonna type them in again um, after your semester, for semester, senior year. So long story short here, the earlier you apply, the earlier you find out, but you only wanna apply early if you know you have a strong application. So that's based on your grades. Um, but I do want you to remember that if you apply early, early action, right? Boom, we're taking action, we're going. All right, you don't get in. They're saying that, dear applicant, no matter what you did senior year, we know you wouldn't have been a good fit for our school right now, okay? If you apply early, they could also defer you. They could wait list you. So first they would defer you and say, we're gonna take your application, put it in regular applicant pool and we're gonna look at you again because we wanna see your senior grades. Okay, so I don't want you to be scared to apply early action. Um, if you don't get in, you wouldn't have gotten in. If you do get in, great, you don't need to think about it again. And if you get um, deferred till regular, you don't have to do anything again. You don't have to apply again. They're just gonna look at your senior grades when we send them, when your counselor sends them. So you don't need to worry about doing another application or anything like that. Um, rolling just means the sooner you apply, the sooner you find out. Some colleges do rolling, okay? So you're like, okay, Ms. Bridges, how in the world am I supposed to know what the application type is, how I apply? This is how you stay super organized. So this is Navion student under colleges I'm applying to. You won't be able to add schools to this section until next year. Right now you're working in colleges I'm thinking about, which looks just like this, okay? The colleges, the application type, am I applying early action, regular decision, rolling, okay? What's my deadline? So keep myself organized, right? Did I request my transcripts? All right, application type, oh my God, great. 
if there's a question mark, that means that you get to choose, you know, COMAP or direct to institution or coalition. But otherwise, when you add them in here, it's going to tell you what the application is, which is super nice. Okay, so if you go to Naviance, you go to colleges, I'm thinking about, you're going to be able to add schools and keep yourself super organized. Okay, this is also the gateway to transcripts, letters of recommendation, all of that. So we will go into this in great detail next year. And then I just want to touch on the role of the parent. Okay, some of you guys are super busy. Oopsies. Super busy. Okay, super busy means if you're super busy now, you're probably going to be super busy in college, which means I still expect you to be able to manage your own college application. Okay, parents and guardians, mentors are amazing support. All right, they're here to help you reflect on like what am I, what's important to me? How do I even determine what success is for me? What do I envision for myself for the next couple years? Um, would you, I want you to know that can change. Your interests, curiosity can change. So processing with somebody who you trust. This is the role of a parent, a guardian, a mentor. It's also a great thing for this person in your life to help educate you on the financial realities of college. What does it mean to be in debt? What does it mean to have a loan? Um, what does this mean for us to help you financially? All right, doing the net price calculator at every college, okay? What I don't recommend is a parent doing a college application or a parent doing an essay. Colleges are very, very wise, um, right? They're getting thousands of applications. And so they can absolutely tell um, who's written what essays. The language is very different from generation to generation, right? Our terminology for things change. So it's very important that the student is the driving force and the person in the driving seat within this whole process. So a parent, guardian, mentor, counselor, we are here to reflect, we're here to listen, we're here to help you wonder, question, figure out what's a good fit for you and educate you. We are not here to do your application. And I say that because we also have super high achieving students and so you guys are slammed with responsibilities. But I want to encourage you that if you're slammed now with responsibilities, you are going to probably be doing a lot in college too, which means you're gonna to have to manage your um, academics, your tutoring, your um, part-time job, your athletics, your clubs, everything that you're doing in college while keeping your grades up. So if you can't do it now, it's a good indicator that, hey, something needs to change. You know, maybe I'm not going to do, you know, all these clubs in college. Maybe I'm going to, you know, dial back in this other area. Um, but it's a really good factor. And it's a good thing for parents, guardians to think about because I don't want to spend $30,000 when my student's not ready. And a good way to assess if my child's ready is can they do this application? And I'm here to help. I'm here to help you stay organized. I'm here as a parent, right, to help my child stay organized and remind them of deadlines. But I'm not the parent to, to um, jump into the application, do the, do the actual application. So keep that in mind. Um, and I say that with a very big heart. I am a parent. Um, I am, you know, obviously have a job and I also care for all of you deeply and I want you to have a good balance but I want you to be able to manage what's coming at you um, in these next four years. So um, let's see here some questions I have to leave but thank you so much absolutely. This is just a shout out for upcoming workshops please come to the college panel I have UVA students coming um, March 15th this is a Monday this is Monday I think March Madness right Monday Madness Mondays um, every Monday I have a bunch of stuff going on for you guys. UVA students in college are going to talk about what's a college experience has been like for them. How did they determine what school is a good fit for them? Um, this information is in Canvas. It's also been emailed to you and your, your parents and guardians. So come out to that. It's 11 o'clock in the morning on the 15th. And then next Monday is the college search stuff with Luann. She's amazing. And then financial reality of college on the 15th. And then of course I'm doing this workshop a couple more times. So I'm gonna hang tight for questions, but I do wanna put in the chat um, my link for appointments with me. I know that you guys are have a lot going on and you're doing academic advising. So if you want to meet with me, um, please do. Um, I just encourage you to see your counselor uh, first for academic advising so that they can answer a lot of the questions that um, you might have because we're doing individual sessions there. And then go ahead and jump on my calendar. I'm going to throw that in the chat and then I'm going to hang tight for questions. <laughs>